Hello, Peter. Hello. <laughs> We're going to talk a little bit about um, the voodoo ceremony that you done the other night, and I'll show a clip of that um, after this interview. And can you tell me first, uh, how did you start in voodoo? What kind of drew you towards that well, practice? First of all, like many people, I had, had a little bit of fear about it. I was doing a lot of healing, and quite often in the healing and dealing with alcohol problems, being bad voodoo curses, and it becomes something really scary. Mm-hmm. And then I figured, well, if there's something you're afraid of or something, you've got to look at it and see what it really is, learn to deal with what's really there. And so I was kind of thinking about it in my mind a lot, but also had a proper time in my life where things, the magic in particular, wasn't working as it used to. There seemed to be a block. I had a, a reading from some uh, New Orleans voodoo priestess, and she basically told me the reason why things weren't working is because the Loire were calling me for initiation and nothing was going to work until I responded. All right, so what's the Loire? The Loire, that's what they call the voodoo deities. Okay, and um, so you just basically, how did voodoo get this bad reputation then? Basically from the Christian church, because the Christian church actually funded the slave trade, and obviously the voodoo developed amongst the black slaves, seeing all these, like, these evil barbarians justified their, their behaviour. But actually, you know, it was the church was a bad one, it's not the voodoo. Uh-huh. Can you give some background to voodoo? It originated in Africa, um, from a combination of different uh, traditions, many Ifo and Dahomey. But when the black slaves were taken to Haiti, the different cultures wanted to get together and preserve what they had, so they combined everything into one. All right. So it's a mixture of different... It's a mixture of, of African traditions, uh-huh. but it's particularly perhaps in Haiti. It's, it's a, it's, it's, now it's the Haitian religion. Right. Different, different islands have different flavours of, of African religion, but uh-huh. voodoo is what's practised in Haiti. So when this lady told you you needed to go there, how, how did you make contact with these people? How did you get invited? Well, I, I actually found them on the internet. A member <laughs> of a scene who runs the Roots to Identity Society was kind of... had various pictures of initiation up on the website, so I contacted her. All right. And she was quite welcoming? Yeah. She did a reading for me and realised there was a certain Loire call in me and said, yep, that's what I need to be initiated to. Okay. Can you describe your experience for the, the trip there and the initiation? Okay, well, the, the whole Kenzo, that's what it's called, it's called Kenzo, takes two weeks. Now, part of it, not allowed to speak about what happens within the Jevo is very secret. Uh-huh. But first of all, you're learning to dance. Every night there are ceremonies and dances where they are drumming and rattling and it kind of calls the Loire into you to get possessed. Uh-huh. And then you, in that process, you know, you're also learning their songs, learning their, their invocations, their vavas, which are the symbols, and how to feed them. So part of the initiation was actually possession? Yes. So you, you long studied this every night. Mm. Sorry? You have long dances every night in which you get possessed, so you're, you're being open to the spirits. Uh-huh. And you studied this before getting there, obviously, just to... Uh, as, as much background reading as I could. Uh-huh. So, how did... I mean, they've got a lot of gods, is that correct? How yeah. many... And how did the gods... Well, the possession, because you do a, a, a ritual, uh, an offering. Yes. And did the gods that work with you, did they choose you to work yes. with? Yes. The first one always chooses what, what you call your Loire Metket, the rule of your head. That always chooses you. Once you've got that one, you can actually choose to work with others as well. But some won't respond as well as others, so obviously you have to, you know, try them out and see, see uh-huh. who's coming. So, how many do you work with? Seven. And is that the most, or can you get more? That's the most um, you can actually have installed into your head. You see, yeah. when they possess you, they actually almost installed to all ways they're ready to work the magic. Uh-huh. And you see, there are three levels of initiation. The first level, which is um, Hunzi, you only have one. The second level is a point, you can have three. At, at the Sogwi, the highest level, you can have seven. And can you remember when you're possessed, can, after you no, come out No, it's only gone, it's like you're out of the body, you know, completely unconscious, the, 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 the Loire that take over. So then, then what good does it do you to become a voodoo uh, priest? Or? Well, the possession is only for others, obviously. If I'm doing my magic myself, they only possess me. I do my rituals and they respond and they work the magic for me. The possession is only so other people can talk to the Loire. Ah, okay. So you work with these gods outside of the, the kind of possession ceremony that you do? Yes, like in my own private magic, we feed the Loire and they do things for us. All right. Um, and obviously, during the ceremony, we ask questions of the Loire, uh, any messages to give to you as well? Yes, because I can't hear anything. So have you no, found no. any of those messages particularly useful? Yes. Yeah, I mean, they, they give me guidance into my life as well, what I need to do. So you act in that guidance, you believe in yeah. them 100%. But it always, always brings a good result. The three that we've done it with, we've we done it with Legpa, Gedi and La Seren. Mm-hmm. Can you give a brief um, description who they are? Legpa is the door opener, so we always worship him first because nobody else can pass without his permission. He is there to let anybody else in. And what kind of questions can we ask him? Well, since it's all about gateways, it's about opportunities where you're going, but opening and closing doors, basically. Okay. And what about Gedi? He deals with death, um, therefore also deals with the ancestry, but also with sex. Sex and death. Yep. It's quite funny how those two are related, aren't they? Well, yes, it's your way in and out of the world, isn't it? Yeah. You come in one way and go out the other. Uh-huh. So they're both related. Uh-huh. 
And it's very comical, Gabby. Yeah, well, you see, they say that when you've died, it's like then there's no more rules on you, you don't care anymore. Oh, right. You let your hair down. Okay. And he's kind of encouraging us to do that in this life. Oh, yeah, he wants us to be free. Yeah. You see, all restrictions, all inhibitions become restrictions on power. Mm -hmm. If you're totally uninhibited and free, then the life force is fully flowing through okay. you. So there's more power. Uh -huh. So he doesn't need to call you to start again. He calls you there and says, you need more power, go back and try again. No, yeah. he's keep, he keeps letting down the inhibitions and opening up more. Uh -huh. So often he'll humiliate you, get some of your boundaries down. All right. And what about that Seren? I found her a very beautiful being. Well, yes, she's the sea. She's very feminine, the very, very full, the very great mother type of energy, very uh -huh. giving. Yeah, it was, it was a real powerful love and energy came out of her. Oh, yes. Of her. She's very good for kind of healing relationships, healing emotional issues and so on. Uh -huh. And she works with poetry and art as well. Yeah. She kind of creates yeah, things with uh -huh. the water, you see. Mm -hmm. So, after you got possessed, you kind of, you, you ate some fruits, you seemed to be quite drained. What, well, after, well, it was, what, three hour possession, yeah. so after being out, out, out of the body that long, you feel a bit ungrounded. Right. So, so you've got to eat a bit and you know, get grounded again. Uh-huh. When um, you were possessed by Gedi, we, we always gave him uh, some money after asking a question, mm -hmm. not the other two, why was that? It's, it's seen with Gedi that, you know, it uh, won't do to owe death anything. Right. So okay. in a, probably it might be in some danger of dying or something, I don't know, but uh, generally you always pay Gedi. So that just be a few coins to so say you don't have anything anymore. Yeah, he was very happy to get it. And he put it in his pocket and he says, make sure my horse doesn't get this. He's oh, referring yeah. well, to it's, you. It's, it's for him, not me, yes. I'm not allowed to take his money. I'll uh -huh. take it to the graveyard afterwards. So, yeah, we went to the graveyard the other day and then um, you just leave it there and you say a quick offering to Gedi yep. there. Yes, get his money. I'll leave it from the graveyard. And what about the stuff um, we used for the other ones? Um, Legba and Lasseren, they had champagne and... Mm. And stuff. What do you do with that afterwards? Well, lesser ends goes into the sea. Uh -huh. Legbus gets left at the crossroads. Okay, thanks for your time. We'll reel the video now and let people see what we've been okay. talking about. For me.